Hi there, this is Carl Irwin, and uh, this is a follow-up tutorial. Haven't been on the channel in a while, but uh, this is a bit of an update for, for Q-Tractor. Uh, and we're going to look uh, more at bus mixing. Uh, bus mixing. And uh, the last time I was on here, and I created a short tutorial to discuss uh, how to use uh, the patching capability uh, in the bus mixer uh, to mix down to um, preliminary buses, then to a mix down bus, and then to the master. Uh, in dealing with kind of a quirk that Q Tractor deals with uh, related to passing signal back into itself. And the issue there being that you need to pass it through some kind of module before it comes back to itself, otherwise, it does not recognize the signal. Um, I have found lately on some systems that I have, uh, a major system that I use, uh, kind of an older machine, but very, very good, capable processor, but an older machine, older technology. It's having a real hard time with Carla, and Carla is spiking the DSP load for reasons I can't understand. Um, Carla is wreaking havoc on, on my setup. So I want to eliminate Carla from my scheme. I want to do everything completely internally inside of Q Tractor, and the way we're going to have to do this is by using inserts. So this is a quick tutorial about uh, getting a comprehensive complete bus mix down using inserts, the insert modules inside of the um, uh, bus mixer. So a couple things about the bus mixer down here, the uh, uh, various buses, you have the master, and then uh, that's the default that's always on there. You can't get rid of it, can't change it, can't do anything uh, uh, with that. That has to remain. Uh, and it always has to sit on the left. I don't know why, but it has to. Uh, and then you can create additional buses. This is the template that I had, and I was mixing bus one, two, and three down to a mix down bus. And then that mix down bus goes to the master using Carla as my patch bay. Um, that, because of Carla, is not working. So what I need to do is patch these directly, but I need to do it in such a way that that uh, Q Tractor will allow the signal to pass through without having any extra modules. Here is the problem: the buses can only mix for some reason to the right. They have to mix in this direction. So I can patch buses here down to the right and those buses down to the right. I can leapfrog, but everything has to go to the right, ending on the right. And this master is always at the top of the chain. It can't be moved down to the right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to completely ignore the master. We're going to ignore it entirely. We're going to create a new master that can be positioned where we want it to be, and we'll set up our mix down going to the right. So let's let's put this together and see if you can track along with me. We're going to go into the buses, and I'm going to take the mix down bus that I've always uh, already created for my template. I'm going to move it to the bottom. Then I'm going to add another uh, bus. I'm going to call this one master, and I'll put parentheses here, and I'll call it internal. So this is our new master. It's it's internal to Q Tractor. It's not uh, patched automatically anywhere. Okay, and we're just going to ignore the main master. This will become the new master. Uh, and when you export, by the way, you can choose wherever you want to export from. When you use the export function, you're exporting an audio mix. So we can always choose this for export. That's not an issue. You can always treat this as your master throughout all of your projects and in your templates. Um, so. What we're doing here is not really that crazy. It's not off the wall. Uh, we will create that. And I'm going to create a couple more. I'm going to create a, uh, I'm going to call this one pass, as in pass through. I'll create that one. And then I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call this dead. Uh, and this channel will do nothing. It will go nowhere. I could use my master for this, but uh, so that I don't create any strange errors uh, with the, uh, you know, the preset capabilities of that master, I want to completely ignore it. We'll just let it sit there, and I will use this as my dead end nowhere channel for when I need to record and bounce out directly inside of the sequencer uh, from uh, MIDI instruments. Uh, that'll make more sense here in a moment. So I have my buses mixing to the mix down, and you can create a longer chain if you want to, and then this is going to go to the master. Uh, and I will close this, and again, this is all moving down the chain and to the right. OK, 
Okay, so we'll hit close. Um, what we need to do is we need to add inserts in the incoming channel. So I need an insert in the mix down where my buses are going to come into. And I need to have a single insert for each bus that comes in. You cannot uh, branch in multiple buses to one insert. You have to have an individual insert for this to work. So I'm gonna right click on this channel and I'm gonna come up here where it says insert and I'll select audio, add insert. I'm going to make it active. And down here for direct access, I'm gonna select send gain. And we'll close that. This is insert one. Then I'm going to right click below that and we'll add another insert for bus two and we'll make it active, direct access, send gain. This is insert two. And then down here below that, I'll right click and we'll add another insert, make it active, direct access, send gain. This will be insert three. So all of my buses will come down to these individual inserts. Insert one will go from bus one. Bus 2 will go to insert 2, bus 3 will go to insert 3. I need to have one insert in my master for my mix down to come into. And I'll right click over here and I will add another insert. This will be insert 4. I'll hit active and send gain. And now I'm all set. I don't really need anything else. I'm good to go. I just need to patch everything. And these patches, uh, these connections will remain with the file. I can save this as uh, a file and set this up as my opening template. And these connections will be there every time I open it up. Uh, so let's do that very quickly. Uh, we'll expand out our connections, open up all of the Q tractor connectins, uh, connections, and we will connect our buses. So bus one, one, which is left, is going to go into insert one, one. This is the insert devoted to bus one in this insert is inside of the mix down um, channel bus. So we hit connect. Bus two, or bus one, two, output two into insert one, two. Bus one, one uh, bus two, one into insert two, one. Bus 2-2 two, two into insert 2-2. Two, two. Bus 3-1 into insert 3-1. Bus 3-2 into insert 3-2. And then I need to take my uh, mix down out 1, and this needs to go to my master internal. But I need to go through the insert that is in there, which is insert 4. Uh, I have not found any way to change the names of these inserts. So it doesn't seem to be that capability in the GUI. So you, and the, the numbers are assigned to them in the order in which they're created. So you kind of need to keep track of what inserts you have where whenever you're doing this. But again, you set it up one time. You don't have to really do anything about that later. Uh, it'll, it'll automatically save those connections. Mix down 1 is going to go into insert 4, 1. Mix down out two is going to go into insert four two. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to send my master internal out to the sound card. So I'm going to go to my master internal out one and I'm going to send this down to my sound card out. So I will connect this to the out one one and the master internal out two to the sound card. Connect that as well. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to use my pass through bus as a means to avoid any kind of um, feedback loops in my recording. So this is actually going to take signal from the sound card. And because it's coming from the sound card back into Q-Tractor, I don't need to pass it through another module, an analyzer or something like that, like I had to with Q-Tractor. Uh, it's coming from a piece of hardware back into Q-Tractor. Q-Tractor will hear it automatically. And this is actually the signal that I'm going to record from. It's going to be the sound card coming back in. So in a low latency or low, no latency kind of situation, uh, this should record quite well. So I'm going to hit pass out. Uh, one is going to uh, take the sound card input. So I'm going to go here to my sound card and uh, make sure I select the right thing. This is the digital microphone. That's the microphone. This is the speaker. Okay, so we want monitor left coming into the pass one. Monitor right coming into pass two. Okay, and that's it. I don't have to connect anything else. The dead 
channel is going to be connected to nothing. This is literally a dead end where signal goes to die. We're just going to keep that on there that we can use uh, for recording purposes so that we're not making feedback loops. So uh, the pass-through uh, channel is the one we're going to record from. And uh, I found that this works pretty well. Just refresh, make sure everything's right. We can minimize this. And uh, let's do a test real quick. So uh, one other thing I want to do is I want to connect my uh, keyboard. So I'll come here to the keyboard, MIDI keyboard, connect that to my uh, Q tractor so that I have MIDI capability. And uh, let's go up here, create a track. We'll I'll add a, a MIDI track. We'll call this test. And uh, we'll hit OK. And uh, under this, I'm going to add a plugin. And we will add a... SFZ player, and uh, we'll open an instrument. So let's come up here. We'll find an instrument. In my instrument libraries. We'll go to um, Versilian, and we'll I think there's a piano in there, an upright, upright piano. And uh, we won't be able to hear it yet because we have not enabled the output in the uh, track. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to send this to bus one. So I could send this to any one of the buses, bus one, two, or three. And then this is going to mix down to the mix down. That's going to go to our internal master, which will in turn go to the sound card uh, and then can come back to the pass through if I want to use that uh, for anything. Uh, so let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. Um, Another thing I want to do is I'm going to actually take my master output and just to be sure, I'm going to drop this all the way down. So the master is never sending anything. We're just going to ignore that. Okay. Um, let's try this. If I select my track, I should be able to play and I get sound. Get sound. So you can see that it comes through plus one, mix down, master internal out to the sound card. And it actually comes back through the pass out. You can see that. And then this terminates. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Um, let's uh, add some effects. So I'll go to bus one. I can layer my effects now in my various bus mixing. So I'm going to add a plugin and we're going to add a uh, reverb. We'll add a sort of a convolution reverb, tap reverberator. And we're going to set this to a small hall. And we'll uh, close that. And now we should hear it. So you can hear that reverberation. And I'm going to layer in another reverb, but I'm going to put this on the mix down. So right down here on the mix down channel, which is what the bus one is coming to, I'll add an additional reverb. This is a finish reverb and we'll add a plug in. We'll select reverb and we'll do a calf, calf reverb for that. And we'll close that out. So now I'm hearing a finish reverb for the whole mix and then an individual reverb for just this bus channel. So theoretically, what I can do is I can add a different reverb setting for bus 2 and for bus 3 and generate kind of a mic distance. If I have a small hall here, a medium hall, and a large hall, I can set instruments on a stage situation away from virtual tree miking. Uh, and then I can get a finish reverb that kind of glues everything together. I can add EQ. Uh, I can add EQ on my channels over here for instruments. I can add EQ for the buses themselves. I can add a finish EQ for the mix down or even on the master if I choose. Uh, so I now have everything set. I could uh, delete this track, save this down as a template, uh, set this as the template file, and I'll always have it every time I open up Q Tractor. No more Carla. No more external kinds of uh, uh, things to get in the way. Everything is internal now using the insert capability. Let's test uh, a, a recording real quick. So I'm just going to arm this for recording and we'll uh, arm the uh, application for recording and we'll just hit test and hit OK. Yep. And uh, we'll hit play. I'll just record just some notes. So I've got my sound, and you can hear I have my metronome on. I'm going to turn that off. I don't want to hear that in the recording. So we'll turn that off when we uh, re-record this. I'm going to add another track. We'll add a, an audio track. We'll call this record. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my input as pass. This is coming back from the sound card. So now I'm getting everything that's coming out of Q Tractor through the master into the sound card coming back to me 
uh, everything is all mixed together. So as long as there's no other peripheral kinds of things coming back through. Now, in this case, I'll probably have the microphone coming back. So that is one issue. Uh, you want to make sure you have microphones turned off. Um, we'll ignore that in this case, but uh, make sure you don't have any other things coming through the sound card that will then come back through in the return. Um, theoretically, you could set this to uh, maybe the master output and add an insert into the pass. That's a possibility. I haven't experimented with that. I just went through the sound card, make it simple so that I had as few inserts added to my project as possible. The output, I want this to go to dead. I don't want to have any feedback loops. So this is going to zero signal that will come back. It's not going to go back anywhere. Okay. And I also have my main master turned down, so I'm not going to get any accidental things that Q-Tractor will create for me. So hit OK. I'm going to arm this for recording, turn off recording up here, arm the application to record, and we will hit play. And we recorded some sound there. You can hear it. I'll hit a solo, turn off the recording. And for the uh, output, I'm going to change this. I'm going to set this to master internal. I'm sorry. I'm going to set this to dead for the input. So there's no input signal coming in. And then I'm going to set this uh, uh, channel now to uh, master internal. So it's going to play back through the master output. So this can now become... Uh, added to my mix, or I could mix this down really to anywhere. I could send this to the uh, mix down or to a bus or something like that. We'll just set this to master internal. I can hear it come back. Hit OK. I've soloed this track. I'll mute this just to make sure you all understand that we're only hearing the recording, and we hit play. Everything works exactly as it should. I can save this. Uh, this will always open up with all of these patches uh, in place. I don't have to redo anything. I don't have to open up another application. And I don't have to worry about Carla. I don't have to worry about another open source project uh, development in order to use QTractor. I'll just use everything here. So, recap. Bus mixing goes to the right. The master cannot be moved. You need to add your buses in the direction to the right. You need to use an individual insert for every incoming channel. Uh, and you set the settings as I demonstrated, make it active, set the uh, 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 gain. You want to uh, indicate on every insert that the direct access is send gain. So that uh, should do it for you. Uh, good luck with that. Happy mixing.